Hello everyone, before we begin, if you subscribe to this channel for more DCU content, I'm actually working on the next episode of my Superman Defense series, so feel free to like, you know, comment and subscribe to not miss out, thanks. I gotta be honest, I had to watch this episode twice to fully get into it. Don't get me wrong, if you told me you, you would rather really love this episode, I would 100% believe you and understand why. But uh, as the shortest episode of the season so far, I feel like it lacked meat in some areas. That said, I can't say I have mixed feelings on it either, because I really do love how much charm society it has, and I can't quite say it's as much as the stuff I didn't enjoy. So without further ado, let's begin. I did feel like the analysis were great summaries of the characters, but not much in exploring them as characters. I was hoping for, for some more delving into the tragic nature of experiments, maybe even a body moment, some are woven to the battle itself. I do really like what they got, but I couldn't help but feel like they could have gone down a route they did in the past. Maybe something related to stage ultimately being built for destruction but sovereign up, in contrast to Rocket being made for the control but got wilder. Also, Dummy literally just taps over a scene of, little, of a little stage short, going over all the creatures stage has made of. It would be neat to actually show different scenes for the various attributes, but it's literally just the same scene with a monotone voice. I watched this short a thousand times when I was a kid, so it probably didn't help, but I'm sure it worked wonders for the unaware. Just that for me, it's just a bit uh, uninspired. That said, with said my Jumba Jukiba as a sign as a fellow med scientist is a nice touch. Funnily enough, I did have the idea of Wits and Boomstick making fun of the more um, vulgar selves in the other seasons. And we do kind of get a vision of that in this episode, with Wits joking about his co host ex wife, like the lad they used to always do, but now takes great offense at someone else doing it, in rather amusing fashion. Again, much like I imagine. Gonna say, the chemistry between these two this th season so far has been the best it's kind of ever been. They got a new team of editors and writers, I think, and so far they've been killing it. Also, it's very nice to hear Boom Boomstick passionately talk about something other than explosions, with some fun effects. Even Wits is proud of his friend's enthusiasm. Rocket's weapons are crazy, like the rampart armed phaser. What the hell is this? The zoom in edits kill me every time, though. I swear, they're like my kryptonite. Well, my, my other kryptonite. The sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to spend all your. Now let's go into the fight itself. For starters, in the background we see the constellation for Matcha Man vs Kool Aid Man in the background. Which, if you didn't know, was one of the worst received and performing episodes in Wizard TV history, so it is sweet that they still acknowledge it despite that. Funnily enough, this also means that Stitch vs. Rocket takes, pla takes place in at least the same galaxy as Harley Quinn vs. Jinx and Trunks vs. Silver. Talk about a fun crossover. Now, that universe sounds rather wonky. The common location is definitely the most interesting we've gotten this season and probably the most abstract we've ever gotten in general. Like, with wa like there's waterfalls seemingly like going forever and perfectly static static pools of water in the middle of the space. It does look, fiddly enough, alien, but just a bit too wink wink about the characters in my opinion. Oh I get it, it's like Hawaii, but in space, by combine, because it, mix, it mixes up the associated places, there's ice cream guys here. Don't get me wrong, I love all that they ever did, including the surfing and the old Hawaii team, it works perfectly fine, but it comes across a bit of immersion breaking for me. Maybe they want to spread some chaos without destroying a very much inhabited Hawaii, but otherwise it's perfectly harmless, and works wonders for the fight itself. Speaking of, it's very interesting how much they insist over this rocket being the comic book one and not the MCU one, but this design and vocal performance are very much modeled after that, which is not a problem, it's just a fun thing to point out, plus it's the most popular iteration, makes sense. The spider animation, while great, do start a bit slow at first, but Rocket and Stitch have a very fun chemistry, right away from the former being no strange in understanding alien languages, making it feel very natural when he reacts to Stitch's dialogue, especially, especially as he layers it as he does. What did you say about my mother? And I've been saying a lot of that a lot this season, which really says something. I'm not really one for the for the ah uh, or the whoa than the ha-has, believe it or not. The rest of the fight perfectly captures the dynamic as a gadgeteer genius versus demolition beast, with Rocket immediately going for the set of traps once he sees how overwhelmed he is in a physical struggle, leading to a very Looney Tunes series of events, again very hilarious to watch. And this part is spe specifically with Rocket leading the stage into a nuke by using himself as teleporting bait, like Cecile from Invincible, was really neat. The fight tone of all is properly cartoony, rather than comic booky, epic or action centric. Again, that's great. 
I love, I love how this season is shaping out to be an ice cream shop of various different flavors. You could argue that the pacing of the fight gets a bit repetitive, with it, with it very much being Rocket pulls out a gun, Stage says nah uh Rocket pulls out a bigger gun, and so on, so forth, and so on until the Thanos Buster gets into play. <coughs> but I did feel like they made the rhythm and pacing feel entertaining enough for it to not be noticeable, unless you think about it. And I mean, in all fairness, as much as this as many similarities and fun chemistry these two have together, <coughs> it's not really a matchup you can do too too much else outside of what I just mentioned, in a variety sense, especially if Stitch getting his paws on Rocket for more than 10 seconds already potentially counting as a game over. So this time it's not really about strategy or choreography, but a fun clash in personality and fight style, full of charm but not too much beyond what you see, which I think perfectly sums up the episode as a whole. The fact that Rocket already has a bunch of traps set, set up shows his fondness for strategies and tactics, whereas Stage ultimately wins by building its victory key on the fly, which does touch on a rather interesting contrast, with Rocket being the more civilized one, but Stage ultimately being the more adept and less explosive fighter. Excellent sprite work and vocal performances, by the way. Now, look, looking back at all the instances where fighters start holding back and press the let's get dangerous button, is usually a less ditch attempt when pushed beyond the physical and mental limits. But in this episode, <laughs> Rocket pulls out a tennis buster because Stitch had a party mount. That is honestly hysterical to me, and fits with the trigger happy, tem trigger happy temper too, until it leads to his demise. Speaking of... If there is something I think can be said for what's already, un for what's already 25% of the season so far, is that not that truly feel like th there was zero thought or creativity put behind it. And this one is no different. While it is rather gruesome to see Rocket being skewed and blown to the winds, they still somehow managed to work in some cartoony humor to the concept of something called irony. If you think about it, the dent involves Stitch creating a rocket-like machine, crafted out of Rocket's own spaceship remains, and set to launch the Guardian straight to the zone weapon stash satellite. That's literally three layers of irony that I think Rocket himself realizes in his last moments. Points to him for trying to get his terrible device to work even while being kebab though. As I'm, glad to, as I'm glad to say this season, it's one more didn't have to but I'm glad they did thingy. And since we entered the Constellation Prize era for Rocket, he did still technically manage to outsmart and outpace Stitch's supercomputer brain multiple times, and even entered the admirably rather smart club of DB combatants who probably to throw off an opponent limp. And besides the trigger happy temper, did have the equipment to potentially leave 6 to 6 in stitches, if we ca if he capitalized on it. And that's it, sorry buddy, no mother winning streak for you. I like this episode as a whole, but I'm not sure where to rank it yet, so let's get into the teams. For a million times the speed of light. The track is really nice, and obviously have this inspired piece that wouldn't feel the place in Star Lost Walkman either, although for the title I would have went with something along the lines of one of a kind, referencing both combatants' unique nature as experiments and their, and their respective found families, but that, but that ties together to the more touching episode my bias self was looking forward to. Still, j Rocket fits perfectly for what this episode turned out to be. Hello I indeed. Next, again, despite the rather simplistic nature of this episode, I will still gather that there's a team of genetics versus equipment. Rocket may have had more firepower, firepower, but that's honestly all he could rely on, and his temper made him difficult to do even that effectively. In contrast, Stitch, Stitch's vastly superior physical attributes plus, plus supercomputer-like brain and cool readiness during battle ultimately proved to be too much for mostly to handle as 626 was really made to be a beast of pure destruction, even if we summoned up afterwards. But not, and, but not even Rocket's entire shift measured up, and in the end, he became one with the galaxy. Well, that was fun. Let's see who's next. Ah, 
I love Fallen Heroes. I love how they explore the complexities of the human morality. I love seeing flashbacks on every day before I went wrong. I love whenever there's callbacks to simple times before fighting for my friends. <sighs> so yeah, I'm kinda looking forward to Vader vs Sobito. Which is odd since I never seen a single episode of Naruto, but hear me out. The last Naruto vs Star Wars episode, Kakashi vs Obi-Wan, is one of my absolute favorites of all time, in both animation, music, dialogue and just vibes in general. There's a good chunk of similarities between Obi and Kakashi, one of them being that they both had a close friend that fell to the dark side and fights them in present day. The next episode will be about those two friends, essentially making this a sequel episode, and I cannot express how hype that gets me. They gotta make a callback to when Obi saw Anakin when underneath Kakashi's illusion eye, illusion eye thingy. All Might vs Might guy, Yoda vs King Mickey, and Madara vs Sizen are also some absolute bang episodes as well, makes for a pretty exciting track records with both series in general. And there's a specific element that follows matchups sent around the Uchiha family that Obido is a part of, specifically in the musical department. I cannot imagine Venom Yates not mixing in this motif with the Imperial March for the upcoming track. There's just so much legacy related potential for this episode as a whole. I would I would absolutely love if it was a 3D matchup, but, but I would also be, be okay with another sprite fight. Beyond what we already know, I just can't wait for the vibe this episode has. The announcement alone has this sinister, eerie vibe that I already love. And both characters are chock full of tragedy potential to be delved into both in the analysis and the battle itself. Imagine a scene of both of their masks breaking as they stare each other down with their one corroded eye. But my dream scenario involves Obito putting an illusion of both of them being children when they, uh, when they were at their happiest, and Vader breaking out of it once again as he announces Anakin Skywalker was weak. I destroyed him. Both of the power sets allow for so much creativity and variety that it would be another amazing 3D fight if they captured that potential. And that's without, without getting into the dialogue that they could use. Sure, lots of obvious cho choices quotes, but since the last time they went a bit overboard with it, I feel like, I feel like it would be epic if they can craft a raw line completely of their own that completely stands by itself. There's a lot of debate potential who would win being a classic stats for sex matchup, aka Vader has superior strength, speed, experience and expertise with speed or energy, but Obito, but Obito not only has better regeneration, variety and great air of effect, but also soul powers that can potentially seal Vader on an astral plane. This is what Vader's soul looks like by the way, come on, they cannot not use this spooky art design. They can outnumber Vader with Salmon, turn intangible and become immortal for 5 minutes. From what I got, again my research is not the best, I'm just saying. I'm no Naruto expert, but I'm really looking forward to this, so I can only imagine what real Naruto fans are like. That said, I'm Mark of Krypton and I hope I made your day... <coughs> slightly better.